Hey, y'all, let me tell you about Mochi. Mochi is a telehealth platform that connects patients seeking medication-based weight loss treatment with board-certified doctors and dietitians to help them determine the best treatment options to accomplish that goal. Mochi's program is completely virtual, meaning you can access their services anywhere in the United States and you will be meeting with their team online. You deserve doctors that listen. Mochi is dedicated to providing holistic, patient-centered care that prioritizes overall well-being with the goal of transforming how weight management is approached. Mochi Health takes a holistic approach to weight loss that includes visit with board-certified doctors, nutrition consultations, and medications delivered to your door. Science-backed medications including GLP-1s like Ozempic and generic compound versions, affordable and accessible regardless of insurance coverage. With Mochi, their dietitians work hand-in-hand with your medication to create personalized nutrition plans that fit your lifestyle. Reach your weight loss goals with science-backed FDA-approved GLP-1 medications and support from real doctors and guidance from registered dietitians and help with making easy and sustainable changes to achieve results. Y'all have seen this. My wife has done it. My brother-in-law has done it. One of my best friends is doing it. And it really is an amazing process that works. So get started at joinmochi.com and use code RLRC to receive $40 off. That's join, J-O-I-N-M-O-C-H-I.com and use code RLRC to receive $40 off and let Mochi Help change your life. Se adelantó el Black Friday en JCPenney. Y para comenzar con el pie derecho, tenemos botas para damas a $19.99 el par. O encuentra toallas de baño Home Expressions a solo $2.99 cada una. Aprovecha y consiente a toda la familia con ropa de invierno desde $17.99. Encuentra miles de ofertas a precios de Black Friday todo el fin de semana. JCPenney. Vale la pena. Ofertas válidas del 8 al 10 de noviembre en selección de estilos. Las ofertas se excluyen de los cupones. Detalles en la tienda jcp.com. Warning, each episode of Real Life, Real Crime, the podcast, will contain descriptions of acts of violence or of a sexual nature and are for people that are 18 years or older. Heed my warning, people. I do not get the facts of these cases off the internet or from some television show. These facts I'm retelling were presented to me by the victims of the crime or the perpetrators who committed the crimes. My descriptions of the crime scenes are what I saw with my own two eyes. If you are going to get offended, turn this podcast off now. Thank you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Real Life, Real Crime, the podcast. As always, I'm your host, Woody Overton. Today, we're going to begin a series entitled Screwdriver Red. The first episode in this series is titled The Awakening. But before we get to today's episode, I want to make a couple of announcements. One is I'm going to ask you to please stay tuned at the end of today's episode, and I'm going to do a promo 
for another true crime podcast. And y'all know I don't do this normally, right? But the podcast is named Witch Murderer. And it's done by two ladies. One that's from Canada and the other one that's from Scotland. Holly and Gemma, G-E-M-M-A. Y'all, it's a very unique podcast. I like it a lot. I like what they do with it. So stay tuned. I'm going to talk about it at the end of today's episode. Also, at the end of today's episode, I'm going to be giving some shout outs and making some announcements about things that are coming up with real life, real crime, the podcast. And as always, I appreciate each and every one of y'all. So without further ado, let's get started. On a hot Louisiana August summer night, 1993, there was a white female, 31 years of age, who lived in the city of Baton Rouge. And for the rest of today's episode, I'm going to refer to her as Victim A, as an alpha. In the second part of today's episode, the lady, I'm going to refer to her as Victim B. Bravo. I'm not going to give any names in today's episode because I want you to find out about it in next week's episode, and I'll explain further as we go. But anyway, y'all, August in South Louisiana is hotter than hell, and even in nighttime when it cools down into the 80s, it's still hot because it's just humid and muggy, right? I mean, the the humidity here is is like breathing underwater. But so victim A lived in the city limits of Baton Rouge in an apartment she shared with two other males. Talking to people about Victor May later on, everybody said pretty much the same thing about her. They said she was a good person and she was likable. She didn't hurt anybody or harm anybody, but fortunately she lived a, a, what we call in law enforcement, we call it the high risk lifestyle in being that she was addicted to crack cocaine and she paid for her habit by the world's oldest profession. She was a known prostitute. And on this night in 1993, she had a date with a trick or a John. That's again, a street term. Y'all a date is when a prostitute engages in a sexual act with whomever for money, right? That's what they call it is a date. And then the trick or John, that's the name of the person that the prostitute does the date with. So she had a date with a male and, and she would meet him at a church parking lot on the outskirts of the city of Denham Springs, Louisiana. Now, geographically, Denham Springs is located to the east of the city of Baton Rouge. And when you leave Baton Rouge, there's two ways to get into Livingston Parish. Livingston Parish is the parish that geographically is next door, if you will, to East Baton Rouge Parish. And to get into Livingston Parish, you have to cross one of two bridges, either the bridge on Interstate 12, which runs over the A Meat River, or the bridge on Highway 190, or what the locals call Florida Boulevard, which also runs over the Amy River. And y'all, the Amy River is a geographical divide between the two parishes. So somehow, Victor May crosses into Livingston Parish and goes to the church parking lot. Now, this church is on the outside the city limits, like I told you, but let me tell you a little bit more information about them springs at that time. It was and still is today the largest city in Livingston Parish, but in 1993, that wasn't saying much. I mean, it was more of a small town, really, than the city. The only thing it had going through it was right off the interstate exit into the city was a truck stop. And if you went underneath the overpass, there was a McDonald's on the left. And across the street from the McDonald's, there was a shopping center with a Kmart, which has long since been closed. But it really was more of a small town. And as a rarity in 
the state of Louisiana, especially South Louisiana, there were no bar rooms inside the city limits of Denham Springs. My mama always said, there's two things you never have to go far to find in South Louisiana. That's a bar room or a church. And she was right, except for the city of Denham Springs. It was, it was just a small, like I said, almost a town. And the population wasn't that large. It wasn't much there. But they did have their own police department. It was very small at the time also. And as soon as you got outside the city limits, it turns rural almost immediately. And by rural, I mean cow pastures and shit, right? Nothing out there. Very few homes. And the further you get outside the city limits, it becomes even more rural. So somehow, victim A makes it to the church park a lot. I don't know. I, I certainly know she didn't have a cell phone, okay? Back in 1993, cell phones weren't prevalent. So I don't know how the date was arranged. I don't know how she got there, but she arrived. And upon her arrival, she would have met the date. Now, let me describe him to you. He's about five foot ten of a slender build, nice looking guy, dressed well, well spoken, and everybody that would come and contact him with him over the years said he had a nice smile. Just a nice average looking guy. So Victor May arrives and she would have met him and she probably thought, geez, it must be my lucky night, right? Because this guy certainly isn't going to do anything to harm me. He's just as nice and as plain as you could get. And, of course, he had that smile, right? So it's speculation. I would, I would assume that they were inside of a vehicle, and they begin to talk. And I'm certain she was put at ease by his demeanor. But at some point, sugar turns to shit, and he attacks her. Now, we know this by the evidence that's found out later in the investigation, but I don't know if the attack started inside the vehicle. But one thing we know is victim may fall back and she fall back hard. I'm assuming she escaped from the vehicle, but then bam, 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 three loud gunshots go off and Victor May ends up face down in the parking lot of the church, dead. And the nice guy with a nice smile, Victor May couldn't have known that smile truly hid the face of a monster. That's what this cat is, just a a bad dude. So uh, I guess he ran like a little bitch probably. 911 got the call, and the sheriff's office covered everything on the outside of the city limits of Denham Springs. And a deputy responded, and they found Victor May face down, dead in the parking lot. At that time, the deputy called for the detectives to come out and the coroner. The detectives arrive on the scene, the coroner arrives. The detectives then call for the Louisiana State Police Crime Lab to come process the scene. Now, the Superior Sheriff's Office wasn't big enough, especially at that time. They're huge now, but... At that time, to have its own evidence or crime scene technicians. And they always called out the Louisiana State Police Crime Lab, who pretty much cover any small jurisdiction, and they offer their assistance on cases when they call. And any time there was a homicide or, or a major case like this with a dead body, we always called out the crime lab. So the crime lab would have arrived, and by the time they get there, the area is already been corned off with the yellow crime scene tape, just like you see in the movies, right? And the detectives and uniform patrol would already talk to the person who called 911, and they would have been knocking on doors, trying to see if there were any kind of witnesses to what happened to victim A. So the crime lab arrives in the coroner, and they the detectives begin to process the body. First thing they're going to do is photograph everything. And I use the term to this day, if I'm photographing something like taking pictures of inside of a a home we're looking at buying, or maybe even a car or whatever, I always say photograph it like a homicide, right? I'm going to work it like a homicide. So I take pictures from every angle. Nowadays it's with digital cameras or you can even use your video, right? But back then, was 35 millimeters straight up 
Polaroids that the detectives would have carried with them. So they're going to photograph everything. And then they're going to work their way into the body of victim A. And she's face down. They don't find any identification on her. And by this time, y'all, the local news or TV stations out of Baton Rouge would arrive. And that's the ABC and the CBS affiliates because they always monitor police band radios and they know when the chatter starts up and the detectives in the corner get called, it's going to be a dead body. So they go out there to report it, right? So they're arriving on the scene while it's still being processed. Again, no identification found on victim A, no purse, nothing like that, no money. So we don't know if the monster robbed her also I assume we did or maybe she just didn't have anything on her but that's kind of hard to to believe so they turn over her body they can see obviously gunshot wounds to her back but they turn over the body and in processing it they notice that her hands both hands contained numerous strawberry blonde red hairs same color hair as the monster right and she has some damage to her fingernails. And so when upon noticing this in the field, which your main job is, is to preserve the evidence. So they would have taken paper bags, large paper bags, very gently inserted her hands in as to not lose any of the evidence. And then they would tape the bags to her arm, both arms, and to preserve the chain of custody of the evidence, if you will. And then they take her and place her inside the body bag and seal it with a lock, which has a a tag number on it. This lock can't be open. It doesn't have a key and it won't be open. It has to be cut open at the autopsy. And again, that's to protect the chain of custody of evidence in case a trial ever comes up and a defense attorney can't say the body was contaminated or those hairs were transferred there by someone else right like oj simpson mess ups so the detectives did a great job the crime scene techs did a great job they get her tagged and bagged and her body is sent for an autopsy which would occur two days later meanwhile like i said they had no identification on her the news runs the story on the late news that night which is around 10 p.m and then it would have been the lead story again the next morning on the early news in Baton Rouge. But at some point, one of victim A's two roommates see the news and they know there has been a murder and it's an unidentified white female, approximately 30 years old. And they're like, holy shit, she didn't come home last night. She didn't come back from the date. And so they call in and say, hey, look, my roommate's missing and or my significant other is missing, right? Then the detectives would have got in contact with them and showed her a picture of victim A's face and they positively identified who she was. So the autopsy occurs and they open the bag, cut the lock on the bag and this the detectives in the coroner and the forensic pathologist in the autopsy room and they process the body from head to toe. The forensic pathologist did an excellent job and he was able to say without a doubt she died from three gunshot wounds to the back. But more importantly, he was able to recover two of the bullets from her body and send them to the state police crime lab for processing. What they would have done, y'all, on been looking for on the bullets, if the bullet isn't damaged too badly, the crime lab has its own section just for firearms and they have a firearms expert. And if the bullet isn't damaged too badly, they can actually take the markings from the bullet and match it up to a known manufacturer of a handgun or whatever type it is, right? This was a handgun and turned out the tech was able to match it to a Colt 38 special revolver. And they do this because each firearm manufacturer has specific what we call striations in inside the barrel marking. So you have a bullet and the, the bullet sits in a shell casing and inside that bottom of that shell casing is gunpowder. And on the outside of the shell casing is the area where the firing pin 
of the pistol or the hammer in this case would have came down. It strikes the end of the casing, causes a spark, which then ignites the gunpowder inside the bullet and causes an explosion. And then the bullet is projected out of the firearm, but it has to pass through the barrel. And, and when it spins through the barrel, it picks up the certain markings. That's how the, the technician was able to match it up to a Colt 38 special. Now, they can't tell you which gun it was, just the name and, and the manufacturer of the firearm. Also, during the autopsy, when they took the paper bags off her hand, the pathologist was able to collect numerous strawberry blonde hairs from, the, from victim A's hands, right, and nail clippings, etc. Now, at that time, y'all, in 1993, DNA wasn't prevalent. I mean, they, it wasn't, I mean, it was in its infancy stages. It's come leaps and bounds in, what, 30-plus years as we know it today. But they wouldn't have been collecting the hair for DNA at that time. They would have been collecting it to do hair analysis if a suspect ever came up. And that's not an exact science either, right? But anyway, the evidence was collected and it's put and stored away. The body's process, she died from three gunshot wounds to the back. And they identified her and they talked to one of the roommates and he told her about her lifestyle and the high risk, et cetera. And the other roommate jetted, uh, he had a couple warrants. He jetted to like, I think it was like Oklahoma city or somewhere. And eventually detectives caught up with him and he was easily alibied out. And there were a couple other suspects that were looking at, but nothing panned out. And unfortunately, as sometimes happens, cases go cold. And for victim may, Hers wouldn't, case wouldn't only go cold, it would go frozen for 16 years. 16 years. So, meanwhile, our monster, our strawberry blonde haired monster with a nice smile, goes on and lives his life for approximately the next year and a half. He gets married. He has kids. He's working a normal job. Just a nice guy and no criminal history. But I believe he was either offending and getting away with it or he was desiring to offend, if you will, maybe the fantasy about it and stalking people, et cetera. But in 1995, it was the Christmas season. And there was an employee at the mall in Baton Rouge, the main mall at the time, Cortana Mall was the name of it. And she was getting off of work after 9 p.m. when the mall closed. And she had... Hey, y'all, let me tell you about Gobble. All Gobble meal kits are pre-prepped. That means less work for you and less waste in your kitchen. Their meal kits include everything you need so you can save time at the store or just skip that trip entirely. I got the box in and I had three different meals. I had a Kung Pao chicken, crispy fish tacos, and a beef boom jignon. However you say it, but let me tell you about the classic beef boom jignon. Look, it came with beef pot roast and a beef broth concentrate, red wine demi glaze, cremini mushrooms, ciapelloni onions, mashed potatoes, baby carrots, and rosemary thyme butter. It was so easy to make. Literally like 15 minutes it took Cindy. And let me tell you something, and all the dishes were fire, but this thing was like a taste explosion in my mouth. It's just un real we've got to spend more time together and more time doing the things we love because everything came in this one single box right to my door so see what a difference gobble will make for your household right now they're all for my listeners a fantastic limited time deal you get a hundred and twenty dollars off across four boxes plus free shipping and free cookies. And let me tell you, those cookies, I ate one that was sin baked and it was delicious. Go to gobble.com slash real life. That's G-O-B-B-L-E dot com forward slash real life for $120 off your first four boxes. 
This offer is not available on the home site, so don't miss out. This is genius. It's taste explosions in your mouth like you've never had. Spark something uncommon this holiday with just the right gift from Uncommon Goods. The busy holiday season is here, and Uncommon Goods makes it less stressful with incredible hand-picked gifts for everyone on your list, all in one spot. Gifts to spark joy, wonder, delight, and that's exactly what I want it feeling. Hey, y'all, I ordered a super cool piece. It's a candle with a sculpture of an LSU Tiger Stadium on top of it. And each officially licensed laser-cut wooden replica features up to four layers of detail, creating a bird's-eye view of a specific football field, seating section, and more. And every label includes your stadium's name, the team's logo, and school location. And it has a coconut, soy, vegan wax infused with sandalwood smell that creates tailgates and touchdowns scent profile, reminiscent of game day. It's invigorating like fresh-cut grass and nostalgic like smoke from a pre-game grill. In common, like the crisp autumn air of a new semester on campus. Y'all, I love it. I have it at the base of my TV, and I'm ready to watch the Tigers play on Saturday night, right? Uncommon Goods. Look, when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses, and many of their handcrafted products are made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S., They have the most meaningful, out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. They even have gifts you can personalize. From holiday hosts and hostess gifts to the coolest finds for kids, to hits for everyone from the book lovers to diehard sports fans, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone, not the same old selection you can just find anywhere. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $3 million to date. So to get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C. That's uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. I had to walk across a huge parking lot to where her vehicle was parked. They made the salespeople or the people that work inside the mall park as far away as they could. Because it's the busy season. They want the customers of the mall to have the easiest access to park. And we've all been to a mall around Christmas time. You can never find a place to park because there's a million people, right? So she has to walk across this mall parking lot. And they weren't lit up like today's malls parking lots are. And I mean, certainly there was some lighting, but not bright like they are today. So she walks across the mall parking lot. She gets in her vehicle, starts it, puts it in reverse, and goes to drive off. And she notices the car's wobbling and it's making a loud thumping noise. And she knows something's wrong. So she puts it in park and she gets out and walks around to the rear passenger side. And she has a flat. She's like, shit, what am I going to do? You know, I know the mall's locked up. I'm going to have to go find a payphone. Because remember, y'all. Most people didn't have cell phones. This is 1995. Most people still didn't have cell phones, and she certainly didn't. And she's, like, distressed, and she didn't know how to change a tire. And she knew mall security was a joke at best. If if they made one pass through the parking lot in a night, it would be a miracle. So she's freaking. She's like, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to walk a long ways to a pay phone to find one, right? But Lo and behold, she looks up and she hears a voice and says, hey, bam, are you having trouble? Can I help you with something? And she looks up kind of startled at first. And then she sees this clean cut, well-dressed, nice looking white guy with strawberry blonde hair with a nice smile. And he's like, you, you got a problem? Can I help you with something? And she said, yeah, I have a flat tire and I don't know how to change it. He said, well, do you have a spare? And she said, I think so. I mean, she was young, y'all, and she was a pretty girl. And he said, well, it's no problem. I can help, certainly help you change a tire. Let's, you know, let's see what, what you got. So she opened the trunk and he found the spare and he was like, yeah, this will work. And so he, he changes the tire for, takes him about 30 minutes and he's done. And 
she's so appreciative. He's like, you're good to go now. And, and she's so appreciative. And she's like, is there anything I can do? Can I give you some money or whatever? He said, no, no, no. You know, it's not a problem. It's my pleasure. I'm glad I could help you. He said, but you know what? He said, my truck broke down. It's on the other side of the mall, the, which y'all would have been the east side of the mall close to Highway 190 or Florida Boulevard, which I told you about earlier, which the distance from Cortana Mall to the Livingston Parish Line where you cross over the Amy River on Florida Boulevard is no more than, say, four miles. So he tells her, I'm parked on the other side and my truck's broke down. I had to go call somebody. Can you give me a ride to my truck? She said, well, sure. I mean, it's the least I can do. Get in. I'd be happy to. So he gets in. He gets in the passenger seat. She drives him around the mall. The mall is huge. And she drives all the way around to the east side. And she gets over there. And guess what? There's no truck. And she stops. She said, well, where's your truck? And he said, oh, uh, it's not here. They must already came and got it. Can you, you drive me down the road? And she was like, no. She got an uneasy feeling at that point. She's like, no, I, I can't do that. Can, can't do it. She's like, come on, please. I mean, I just changed your tire for you. Can you just drive it just a little bit further? And she said, no, I can't. He's just, matter of fact, I'm going to have to ask you to get out of the car. And at that time, sugar turns to shit. Oh, my. He pulls out screwdriver a flathead screwdriver about four inches long now y'all flathead screwdriver from outside of the united states i don't know what you have out there but a flathead it has a flat almost sharp edge on the end of it and he pulls it out and he sticks it to her throat and he grabs her by the back of her hair jams the knife up against her neck and says bitch i told you to fucking drive he said you're gonna drive me or i'm gonna fucking slit your throat She's like, oh, okay, okay, I'll do whatever you want. And she was freaked out, right? Rightfully so. And so he told her to drive out onto Florida Boulevard and head east towards Livingston Parish. And she's freaking out. She's like, please don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. He's like, I'm not going to hurt you. you just, I need you to give me a ride to where I need to go. Now, Florida Boulevard from the mall to the Livingston Parish line is very well lit up. The street lamps, right? There would have been some traffic on it. It's one of the major thoroughfares through the city of Baton Rouge. So I'm sure he was behaving, trying to not threaten her at that point or whatever. But as soon as they crossed the Amy River Bridge into Livingston Parish, the first road on the right is called 4-H Club Road. And it actually skirts around the city limits of Denham Springs. And he knew this. And he probably traveled this road a thousand times in his life. And back then, when you turn on the 4-H club, there's a couple of houses, and then it almost instantly becomes rural. And by rural, I mean cow pastures and no street lights, nothing. And so they turn on 4-H club, and he's like, just keep driving, bitch. And she's like, just don't hurt me. And as soon as they got past the houses, and and he knows right, right where he's at, she doesn't. She's not from there. But as soon as it turns pitch black, he starts telling her what he's going to do to you. He said, bitch, you're going to drive, and this is what's going to happen. You're going to drive to I tell you to stop. And when I tell you to stop, I'm going to fuck the shit out of you. And as long as you do what I tell you to, and you don't fight me, I won't hurt you. He said, if you fight me, you resist me, you try to scratch me or anything, I'm going to shove this screwdriver in your neck, and I'm going to kill you. She's like, please, oh, God, no, please don't do it. And he's like, shut up. If you don't shut up, I'm going to kill you. And when we get to where we're going, I'm going to fuck you. And then if you resist, I'm going to kill you. This poor girl, right? I mean, it's like the nightmare. The monster has shown his face. What happened to that nice smile, I wonder, right? And she's screwed because this road at 10 o'clock at night in 1995, there is no traffic. This road actually kind of follows the Amy River Parish line and heads into the southern end of Livingston Parish. And there's nothing at that time. There was nothing out there but cow pastures, et cetera. And he's telling her how he's going to rape her and do all these vile things to her. And almost out of nowhere, she sees headlights coming from the opposite direction. And he sees them. And he's like, oh, shit. And he said, don't you do anything. 
don't you do anything. And that puts it in our mind, right? That this is my chance. And this long, dark, deserted road, the, that vehicle got closer. And, and right before it got to him, she took the wheel and slams it sideways, her car in front of that vehicle. So it had to lock. It was a truck. It had to lock up its brakes. And he freaks out for a second. So the monster just freezes and she's able to jump out of the car and run screaming towards the other people. And he's like, Oh shit, you know, what do I do? And then he jumps into the driver's seat and steals the car. He hauls ass, ran like a little bitch and he gets away. The sheriff's office is called and uniform patrol responds and the detectives are called and they do great police work and they are able to come up with a suspect and then they went and had a photo lineup made or what we call a six pack now back in 1995 they had to do it by hand okay so they had to go through photographs of people who look like the suspect and you have to be fair i mean you can't put five black guys and one white guy in, in the photo or you can't put you know, five other people with dark color hair and, and dark skin because the monster, remember, has a strawberry blonde hair. He was, he was light complexion, very light, almost pale to the point of being pale. And I mean, he just has a real dis distinct look to him. So they do the best that they can on the photo lineup and they would have presented it to victim B and they tell her, we're going to show you a photo lineup and we want you to Pick out your assailant if he's there. Don't guess. We don't want you guessing. We want you to be a 100% sure, so certain, in fact, that you, you will be able to get up on a stand in a court of law and swear under oath that this is him. If he's in this photo lineup. And she's like, okay, cool. And so they showed it to her. Immediately, she picks him out. That's him. That's him. That's him. And it's the monster. Right. And she said, 100% certain. I'll never forget his face. I'll never forget those eyes. I'll never forget the look that he gave me. She said, I know he was going to kill me. There's no doubt in my mind he was going to kill me. So the detectives take her statement and of everything that happened. Right. And so they, from that, they draw up a warrant for aggravated kidnapping, which, cause he kidnapped her using the screwdriver. Right. And the vehicle theft was really a, an armed robbery and aggravated assault for threatened bodily harm, which was the rape in this case. And I bet he was going to kill her if she fought or resisted. Anyway, they drew up the warrants and they went and found the judge and they had it signed. Now, when you go to get a warrant signed by a judge, it's not always in a courtroom. There's not a judge in the parish. When I was a detective that I hadn't woke up in the middle of the night to get a warrant sign, right? I'd go to their home. Usually they have one judge that was on call. You'd go to their house. You'd call them and say, hey, judge, I got a pretty bad case, right? You're not going to go wake up a judge for you know, simple theft or a vehicle burglary. I mean, it had to be something serious. So you go to the judge's house. You tell them what happened in the case. And they read the victim's statement. And they read the warrant that you typed up. And then they'll swear you in, just like. You're going to take the stand in a courtroom. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, blah, blah, blah. And you say yes, and then the judge reads it. And if they think there's enough probable cause, they sign the warrant, which the judge did sign the warrant. Now the detectives then go to the monster's house, and he doesn't even put up a fight. I mean, he's just kind of nonchalant about it. They arrest him on the spot advise him of his Miranda rights and bring him in. He's cool as a cucumber, no sweat, no emotion, just dead calm. And they bring him in. They tell him what the charges are and what the allegations are. And shit, he didn't deny it. I mean, he actually admitted to it. So the detectives know this guy's got no criminal history, nothing. He's married. He's got kids. He's got a decent job. I mean, he's got a good work history, et cetera. So, I mean, they, they book him in, and this, the case is forwarded to the district attorney. Now, at some point, the district attorney decides 
not to take the case to trial. I mean, the guys are admitted to it, right? But, but they offer them a plea bargain. And the plea bargain, y'all, is a bit shocking. The aggravated kidnapping charge alone should have been life in prison. The armed robbery charge is up to 99 years. And the other charges, whatever. But those charges alone, he should have never got out of prison. But they gave him a plea bargain, no criminal history, married, kids, etc. I don't know what the thought process was on it, but the plea bargain was, wait for it, seven years. Seven years. And he better believe the monster jumped on that bitch like it was Christmas morning. And that's the deal of a lifetime. But wait, it gets better. He goes for sentencing, and the judge sentences him to seven years. But the judge suspends five of the seven years. So the monster for the aggravated kidnapping only goes to prison for two years. What they dropped it down to, y'all, was attempted simple kidnapping. And he pled to seven years, and the judge suspended five of the seven. So he went to the Department of Corrections for two years. Two years. Can you imagine that? Now, I know for a fact, if they knew what the monster would grow into, they would have never given that plea bargain. And I want to tell you that when the detectives were interviewing and they asked him, why did he choose the girl or tell us what happened? And he said, I saw her in the mall and I thought she was very, very pretty. He said, so I started watching her and I started following her. And I knew when she got off of work, I needed, she parked in the same general area every day. I knew what she drove and I knew None of her co-workers parked by her, and she just hauled ass after work and pretty much not ran to the car, but got to her car as quick as she could, and she wasn't alert or aware of her surroundings. He said, so I slid her tire, and I, had anybody been around, I wouldn't have done it. I would have just walked away, he said, but I hunted her. I, I wanted her, and I was going to get her, and I got her. So, But he goes to prison, and most rapists, or child molesters or whatever to go to prison, they catch hell from other inmates or convicts. But this guy's slick, right? Nice smile. He's kind of charming in his own way. And shit, he gets along with the inmates. He's kind of, everybody likes him almost, right? And I've always said prisons are nothing but graduate schools for assholes that are criminals. If you go into prison and you're not remorseful for what you've done, all you're going to do is sit around and think about how you're going to offend when you get out and you get to glean information from other career criminals about their crimes and what they did right and what they did wrong, et cetera. But you know what? They liked him so much. This is kind of fucked up, but they, they liked him so much. They gave him a nickname and the nickname would follow him for the rest of his life. But they called him screwdriver red. Screwdriver Red. And I think it's obvious why they called him that, right? Because he kidnapped the girl with a screwdriver and he had the strawberry blonde red hair. So Screwdriver Red. In prison for two years. And I'm going to stop today's episode there, y'all, because I want you to tune in to next Friday's episode and hear what kind of shit this monster does does in my entire career this is one of the most horrifying cases that i worked in it's just horrible what he does would end up affecting thousands of people literally it's a story that needs to be told and so tune in next week for the second part i think this is going to go probably four part series screwdriver red I'm your host, Woody Overton, Real Life, Real Crime, the podcast. Don't let me catch you down on Murder Bayou.
Hey, y'all, I told you to stay tuned at the end of the show. I want to talk about another true crime podcast, Witch Murderer. And y'all, this, if you listen to me in my past episodes, you know that I didn't know what a, a podcast was, much less listen to a true crime podcast. And I've only promoted two in the three months that we've been doing this. And the first one was 1096 Crime Chicks and Amy Derrick and Jessica Bad- the, I'm sad to say, as of yesterday, I found out their podcast isn't going to be going on anymore. We liked them. They helped us out a lot when we didn't know anything, and we'll miss you guys. And the other one is True Crime Island, Cambo Ford from Australia. And I like his shit. It's really cool. But this is Witch Murder, and it's unique and different than any other podcast, especially True Crime, that I've listened to. And I've listened to a lot of them, y'all, and thought about doing some promos with some of them, and I just couldn't do it. I mean, I just didn't like it, right? Not in any way, shape, or form at all. I couldn't even listen to it. So, which murderer is not that case. It's interesting. It's well done. And the host, Holly and Gemma, Holly from Canada and Gemma's from Scotland. Holly has a little bit of an accent, but Gemma, my gosh, that's, it's, it's a really thick Scottish accent. But what they do is they pick a certain topic of murder, like let's say, murder in the workplace and but then they'll each pick a murderer and tell their story holly goes first and she'll tell about her story and it's really well done it's it's researched well they have a lot of facts in there they're interesting cases to me because i don't know them and i, I do like to listen to murder cases and stuff i've always been fascinated by it but so holly will go first and tell hers and then there's pause in the middle and then Gemma will tell hers but what's cool and different about it is at the end of the podcast or then end of their storytelling, they choose if they were to be murdered by one of the two that they did the episode about, they choose which murderer they would want to kill them. Uh, it's just kind of a unique spin. It's pretty damn cool. And I want y'all to, to give a listen to their promo now. Hi, I'm Holly. And I'm Gemma. And together we are the co-hosts of the podcast Witch Murderer. Each week we discuss two murders and we try and focus more on the victim's perspective. Oh my god, that's not who I thought was going to die. Let's just blame it all on Tom Cruise. Yeah, and just mass stumps me at every turn, (laughs) even in dismemberment. We all know she was cut in half. He had projectile pooped. Oh no! The entire room. Planet. Will they ever get along? God damn it. Fucking get along, eat an ice cream cone. <laughs> you're going to make so many enemies, and I love it. How many times do I have to say, if you're going to murder people, don't keep a don't fucking keep a diary. diary? Don't keep a diary. I really didn't want to be frozen to death. When were you born, honey? No, I'm not telling you. I don't like the thought of somebody who's selling ice cream being that angry inside. And then we have... Hey, y'all. You want to set your child up for success? Is your child struggling with a specific subject or need help with the subject? Is your child ahead, not getting challenged enough in class? Well, IXL Learning is an online learning program that enriches your homeschool curriculum. It offers practice in math, English, language arts, science, and social studies while adapting to each child, meeting them where they are. Plus, IXL encourages students to become curious and empowers them to choose how to learn look we homeschool our son no doubt about it he's more of a visual learner and we use ixl and cindy teaches him and there are so many different benefits to the program it adapts to exactly what he needs in different areas so ixl is the perfect supplement to your homeschool curriculum ixl offers interactive practice problems educational games, lessons, and video tutorials for every topic you're teaching at home. It's easy to use, time-saving. Everything on IXL is organized by grade, subject, topic, and subtopic, making it simple to find activities for the exact skills you're covering. IXL offers instant feedback and explanations of new topics as kids use the program. Kids can explore any topic in any grade level They aren't forced into a single learning path like they are on other programs. If you're homeschooling your child because they were falling behind or 
because they were too far ahead like our son, IXL is a great program to help them get the exact support they need. Kids love IXL's positive feedback awards and educational games. IXL is trusted by 15 million students worldwide and has proven to improve performance in over 75 scientific research studies. Make an impact on your child's learning. Get IXL now. And Real Life Real Crime listeners can get an exclusive 20% off IXL membership when they sign up today at IXL.com slash today. Visit IXL.com slash today to get the most effective learning program out there at the best price. And don't forget, Real Life Real Crime listeners get 20% off. Y'all, we really do use this product and it's been a godsend. Hey ladies, are you feeling overwhelmed by hormonal changes? Well, you're definitely not alone. There are more than 1,000 hormone disruptors living in our environment right now. It's sending your food, your water, the air you breathe, the clothes you wear, your skincare products. They all mess with your hormones. Then there's the natural hormone changes your body goes through. Premenopause, menopause. And while it's a natural process, it doesn't mean you have to suffer through it. The good news is you don't have to suffer through it anymore because now you have Hormone Harmony, a formula made only with herbal ingredients that are shown to reduce hormonal symptoms in women of all ages. Hormone Harmony is not just a hormone support and supplement. It's become a phenomenon. Women can't stop talking about it on social media. A bottle of Hormone Harmony is sold every 24 seconds. And the biggest benefit? Well, my wife says it makes her feel like her own self again. And that's what women mention over and over in the reviews. And there are over 30,000 reviews for Hormone Harmony. And for a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use code RLRC at checkout. That's happymammoth.com and use code RLRC for 15% off today. That's H-A-P-P-Y-M-A-M-M-O-T-H dot com and use code R-L-R-C. Give ourselves a little debate at the end about which murderer we would want to kill us if we had to choose. If we had to choose. It's a game of which would you rather. Exactly. And if you fancy playing that along with us, you can find us on Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes. Uh, You can also listen to us on Audioboom and our website, witchmurderer.com. And you can always get in contact with us at Twitter and Instagram at witchmurderer and also witchmurderer at gmail.com. So hopefully you'll be listening to us soon. Bye. Goodbye. Hey, y'all. So there you have it. That's Holly and Gemma with Witch Murderer. Check them out and subscribe, listen like them and let them know that real life, real crime, Woody Overton sent you, right? It's, it's important. And tomorrow they're going to be releasing their new episode. That's, oh, I say tomorrow. They said it's going to be uh 7 PM. I don't guess it's PM. What seven o'clock in the evening on Friday, London time. Um, I'm not up on our time zone differences, et cetera, but they're going to be doing a promo for, Real Life, Real Crime, the podcast. So y'all check them out. Listen to it. Give it a listen. It's, it's totally different. Totally different from what I do, but I like it in its own unique way. And thank you, Holly and Gemma and Witch Murder. We appreciate y'all. Okay, y'all, the other announcements I want to make, y'all know we're going to be at Crime Con, which is in just three weeks in New Orleans. Now, we're not going to do the booth like we had planned originally, but we're going to go to do the meet and greet with our fans. And we have numerous fans that are coming. We're going to take them out, but we're going to show them a good time. Uh, We're also going to be meeting other podcasters, true crime podcast personalities, et cetera, and and establish some relationships. But if y'all are coming to crime con, let us know. And we're going to do a live polygraph from Crime Con on one of our dream team moderators that's coming. And I'm going to do the live polygraph. When my live, I mean, we're going to run it on Facebook on our private group page. And y'all, that page is real life, real crime, friends, fans, and crew, K R E W E. 
and we passed over 800 members last week. I think today it's like 815 or 820, something like that. And if you're not a member of the page, send us a request and our dream team moderators to get you approved. And it has so much bonus content on episodes and fan interaction and like Karen Ortolano post almost daily true crime article on some sick ass criminal from way back when. Right. And so it's just, if you like true crime, and you like real life, real crime, the podcast, join the group and you, you'll get a lot out of it. I promise you. And we run contests and promotions, et cetera. But anyway, from, from crime kind, I'm going to do a polygraph live to our private Facebook page on one of our dream team moderators. And it will be interesting. I assure you, and there'll probably be some adult beverages involved and <laughs> it's going to be fun. Also, they're kicking around the idea of me spraying one of them in the face with freeze plus P, which I don't, I just don't know if I could do that because I know how bad it is. And I, I mean, I really do. I think they like the idea of doing it and doing it live on Facebook. The shit would probably go viral, but I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. Either way, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff live from CrimeCon. And y'all, in June, we're, we're going to be adding a lot of new stuff to our episodes. We're, we just recently purchased some all top of the line equipment, the sound boards, and all this other fancy stuff, et cetera, which you'll get to see at CrimeCon when we go live on Facebook at CrimeCon. But it's going to allow me to start doing interviews whether by phone or in person. And I say interviews, but when I do my podcast, when I tell my stories, I'm involved in every single one of them in some type of way and personally involved. And I have personal knowledge. Now, the, the people I'm going to be bringing on will either be law enforcement members that I work with on certain cases or witnesses or even victims. And so we're going to kick it up a notch. We're going to start bringing courtroom testimony and then, playing 911 calls and stuff like that. It's going to be an exciting time. Y'all stick with us. It'd be awesome. All right. So I want to talk to our patron members for a moment. Y'all last week we started tier four. We created a new tier for patron members. It's $20 tier. And for $20 a month, you get all of the bonuses at tiers one, two, and three. Give it also upon signing up, you get a real life, real crime sticker of your choice. And that's five bucks without shipping and then after two months of being a tier four member you get a t-shirt from the real life real crime store which is rlrcpodcast.com of your choice and that's that's 20 bucks right there without shipping and you get to pick and choose which one you want and so if you're already a patron member and you want to upgrade to tier four which we had numerous people do this week then you your time counts. Your two months has already started from whatever day you became a patron member. But also, for being a Tier 4 member, two months in, you get a personal phone call or FaceTime or Skype, however the hell you want to do it, from me. We'll, we'll chat about whatever you want to. Price of eggs in China, a murder, I don't care. I, I sure look forward to talking to you, though. And, you know, say. So, that's another benefit for tier four patron members. And I want to do some shout outs for our new patron members and the people that upgrade it. So bear with me for a minute, but it's important. And, and I still have some more announcements. Y'all hold on. So we have new patron members, Miss Laura middle initial N is in November last name. Yarnell Y A R N E L L. Laura, thank you so much for joining us on Patreon. It means a lot, and I really do appreciate you taking the time to sign up and support us. It really helps us out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then our friend Ryan Horan from North Carolina. Ryan is a master furniture builder, and it's probably going to end up costing me a tons of money because my wife loves his work, right? Ryan, thank you for taking the time and subscribing to us through patron i really do appreciate it so much and then karen travels upgraded to tier four karen you know we love you and last week y'all on the hotline episode i accidentally started out calling karen kathy 
when I was answering her questions because she had a two part question. And the second part was about Kathy Bernard. So when I started to answer it, um, the notes to me, I accidentally called her Kathy, but I did correct it. But so Karen, I won't call you Kathy again. We love you. Thank you for participating in the hotline. I really do appreciate you so very much. And Stacy Spalding upped her pledge this week. And Stacy, you've been with us for a long time, dear. We love you to death. Uh, don't be afraid to use the hotline, y'all. And this week I'm doing, we get enough questions. I'm going to do, I'll answer the questions and do my take on the Jessica Chambers case, which is just fucking horrible. If, if you don't know who she is, Google her. It was a murder that happened in a small town in northern Mississippi. And it's the worst case of police work and prosecutorial or district attorney fuck ups that I've ever seen in my entire life. And I'm the biggest pro police person you'll ever meet and pro DA. But uh, you got to call a spade a spade on, on this one, y'all. It's horrible. And I'm actually certified as an expert witness in all United States federal courts in law enforcement matters, right? So people hire me to look at their defense cases, et cetera, and, and study them and see if the police have done right or wrong or whatever. And, you know, they're like, Woody, cop friends of mine are like, Woody, how can you work on for the defense, I'm like, and you know what? I don't really have a problem with it because some people are innocent and they deserve help, right? And sometimes the cops get it wrong. And sometimes they're shithead cops. Right? And we know that there's good and bad in every profession. Now, I believe with my whole heart, way, 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 I know there's way many more. There's great cops than there are bad ones. There's good and bad in every profession. But there's some shitheads out there. And so I do do defense consulting work. But this case, Jessica Chambers, oh, my God. The, 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 oh, I just, I don't want to get started on it tonight. If you have a question about Jessica Chambers, just send it in. But I can tell you this. I'm not going to hold any punches on those bitches up there. And I'll be banned from the northern four counties in Missis, Mississippi where Jessica was from because they're going to they're have a price on my head by the time I get done with them. So, but if you don't want to talk about Jessica Chambers, use the hotline to call in questions or shout outs about anything. And those, those hotline episodes have been a huge success. We get thousands of listeners each time they drop. So evidently people are liking it and I like doing it. Um, moving on. Thanks anyway, Stacy. Uh, Becky Andre, you pledge tier four, Miss Becky. You're awesome. Thank you so much. And, really helps us out and thanks for supporting real life real crime and we love having you thank you thank you thank you miss tina benton up to her pledge this week tina you know we love you tina and i worked together in the past and she's quite the character big supporter of real life real crime the podcast and tina we love you and thank you for supporting us i appreciate you miss courtney up to hers to tier four this week also miss courtney Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Courtney, you've been very active in the hotlines, et cetera, and I appreciate you, and I appreciate your support and your liking and listening and sharing us and the, being a patron member is priceless. Thank you, Courtney. I really do appreciate you. And Miss Melanie Shepard has been with us forever. Uh, she up to Tier 4 also, patron. Miss Melanie, I do appreciate you. You know this, and you've been there for a I say a long time. I've only been doing it for like two months, but it seems like a long time to me. And I appreciate you, Melanie. And thank you for supporting. It means a lot. Miss Alicia jumped up to tier four. Also, Alicia, I really do appreciate the support. It helps out and means a lot to me. And thank you for doing it. I hope you get the most out of your patron benefits. Y'all, which includes Tier four, I mean, it's everything that all, all four tiers get. So it's not just a hotline. They get a discount in the store, a huge discount, just tier four to us. And, you know, all the other things that go with it. But Alicia, I appreciate you. and Thank you for doing it. And Brandy Elliott has been with us forever and or since the beginning. And Brandy jumps to tier four also this week. Brandy is very active 
on the hotline, et cetera. And Brandy, I appreciate you and your patronage and, and supporting me. And I have not forgot about our private discussion. Brandy has some questions about some cases that involved in her personal life and a very important Brandy. And I'm not, I hadn't had time to do it just yet, sweetie, but I'm going to get to it. But thank you for supporting and thank you for jumping up to tier four. And I really do appreciate you. Thank you so much. Miss Christina Hernandez from San Diego. Miss Christina is a dear friend of the show. She gives more than she has to on Patreon. And I really appreciate it. Miss Christina. And she also y'all is a dream team moderator of her private page and Christina, I bet you don't think that I know that all that you do as a moderator, right? So you're not always the most vocal one, but I see what you do in all the groups and everything. And I appreciate you. And you are absolutely a dear. I love you. I really, really, really. And I couldn't do it without you, Christina, you and the rest of them. I appreciate you so much. And Sam Cross jumped hers up to tier four. And Sam is also a dream team moderator and a huge supporter and a little bit of my voice of reason. She knows a lot about podcasts and is like huge. I don't want to say fanatic about it, but she knows about them, et cetera. And she's helped me out on a couple of questions that I had. Plus she does it, everything, a lot of stuff every day behind the scenes for real life, real crime, the podcast. And Sam, I love you and I appreciate you. And Sam's going to be at crime con and we're going to throw down. So Sam, don't drink for like the next three weeks. So you'll be fresh for crime con. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate you, dear. And Miss Lisa Chase signed up as a patron member. Lisa, I really do appreciate you. And thank you so, so very much for supporting our real life, real crime, the podcast. And we love you. And I listen, I love the patron members, but I love all the fans, y'all, each and every single one of you. And if you can't be a patron member, I'm totally cool with that. No sweat. I love you just as much. And y'all are making us blow up. We hit 60,000 downloads yesterday. 89 different countries across the world. That's eight, nine people. I didn't even know. I can't name 89 countries, right? Unless I read it off the list. 89 countries across the world. And it's because each one of y'all, the fans are liking and sharing real life, real crime. and. I'm going to do something today that I haven't asked before because I gleaned it actually from a witch murderer and the promo I'm doing next week, which is the state of perfect balance. I listened to their episodes all the way through and I gleaned a little bit of ideas of what's asked of the things that I like that they ask at the end of their episodes. And so what I got from it is I should be asking y'all, to not only like and share, I should ask you to subscribe to our podcast, first of all, evidently. So whatever podcast medium you listen to me through, subscribe to it and also leave a written review. And I, I read every one of the reviews, y'all. And I've never asked for that before. I didn't think so. I'm no veteran podcaster here. But I know on like iTunes reviews, we have a well over a hundred something reviews and most of them are five stars. And we have a couple that evidently didn't like when I said snowflake or whatever, that's, that's fine. I don't mind the bad review. But in the fact that they took the time out of, I moved them so much. I pissed them off so bad <laughs> that they took the time out of their day to actually go to iTunes and leave me a shitty review. Okay. Thanks. I appreciate it. But anyway, y'all leave us a written review. And, and I'm going to see what kind of response we can get out of that. And I wish I had been asking that all along. Uh, subscribe, leave us a written review. And if you leave a written review and then, and message me, which one is yours, right? And I can read it. I'm going to give you a shout out on the next episode. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a patron or not. And I want you to know we have three Facebook pages, a regular one that's open to the public. We have the one I've been talking about, Real Life, Real Crime, Friends, Fans, and Crew, which is a private page, which I adore. And then we have the new page we started, which is Real Life, Real Crime, Lanyap page. Lanyap being a Cajun word for bonus or extra. And it's, it's where we had so many posts from our fans in, in the private group about 
what their hobbies are and what they like and some things they have to sell. So we create the, this open group, the Lanyap page. Man, check it out, y'all. Go go and join it and check it out. It's cool. Like, I'm interested in different beers and hot sauces and salsa from around the country and around the world. And I'm, I'm actually actively engaging right now in trading some items with fans, right? And they're sending me some stuff. I'm going to send them some stuff. And when they send their stuff in, I'm going to do videos of it and post it. So y'all check that page out. It's pretty cool. It's very interesting. Some great things on there. It's really cool stuff. Just check it out. And also we're on Instagram and Twitter. And I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know shit about either one of them. I have them and I read it. And But the Dream Team moderators, my wife and even my daughters, help me keep up with the tweets and the Instagram. One's tweeting whatever you do on Instagram, but I know it's, it's big, it's a big media for us. And so we do have those pages. Y'all go and like us and share from there also. And we have our own YouTube channel. So you go to YouTube and you go through the search bar or whatever it's called. And you search for real life, real crime podcast. You have to type that in and it'll bring you to our channel. And if you would subscribe to it, it doesn't cost anything. It has every single episode that I've recorded on there that you could play it from. And it also has a bunch of videos. I've been doing videos from different places where, where I'm at, usually doing out of town doing polygraphs. And some of the videos are my wife and I on our date days, right? We did a couple of live Facebook live things and stuff. So check it out. If you want to put a face with a voice, then it's there for you on YouTube. And, you know, anyway, I love all y'all. I'm enjoying the shit out of this. It's fun. My wife, you know, stays up every night editing after she gets in from teaching and whatever. But we do it because we love it. And we love each and every one of y'all. And, and I'm like a crackhead watching the numbers on lips and all day long. They spin and we're doing a over averaging over a thousand a day now. Y'all, it's just unheard of. And it's because of y'all liking and sharing and now hopefully subscribing and leaving a written review and let me know when you do and i'll give you a shout out so i, I guess i'll conclude it um please tune in next week it's a very very important episode of screwdriver red it's horrible absolutely horrible i love each and every one of you i'm woody overton your host real life real crime the podcast and don't let me catch you down or murder by you. Thanks. Oh, she do me